Hello, hi, my name is André Deneau. Thanks for the invitation to talk about TEUs during hemodynamic instability outside the cardiovascular operating room. I will be uh, giving this presentation with uh, Dr. Gen Geneviève Riendo uh, bolac Those are our uh, disclosures. And uh, our objectives are the following. First, to appreciate the essential role of TE in cardiac arrest, to identify the key findings in unstable and hypoxic patient using TEE, and finally, to identify key findings in unstable and hypoxic patient using extracardiac TEE. So my name is Geneviève Rindo bolac and I'm an anesthesiologist at Montreal Sacré Cœur Hospital. As you all know, hemodynamic instability and hypoxemia can rapidly lead to cardiac arrest, and management of cardiac arrest outside of a controlled work environment like the cardiac OR can be really challenging. So TE can play an essential role during resuscitation, even when a probe is not already in place. We'll start this presentation by exploring together the reasons why TE is useful in cardiac arrest and how we would use it in this particular context. So a little quiz to introduce the reasons why TEE is useful in cardiac arrest. Which statement is true? A. Ultrasound should always be used during cardiac arrest. B. TTE and TEE offer the same possibilities during cardiac arrest management. C. Data show that TEE reduces mortality following cardiac arrest. And D, TEE provides chest compression feedback in real time during resuscitation. So the answer is D. As demonstrated here on this TEE mid-esophageal long axis view, obtained during chest compression of a 50-year-old patient in cardiac arrest. You can see how CPR has been optimized to allow LV ejection through an open LVUT and aortic valve during compression phase but be mindful that this is not always the case during TEE blind resuscitation. And this is one of the reasons why TEE can play an essential role during cardiac arrest. So let's dive into the subject. So point of care ultrasound is a bedside tool that is now widely used during cardiac arrest. In fact, the recent 2020 American Heart Association guidelines for CPR states that if an experienced sonographer is present and use of ultrasound does not interfere with the standard cardiac arrest treatment protocol, then ultrasound may be considered as an adjunct. Focus in cardiac arrest relies mostly on cardiac ultrasound and TTE during cardiac arrest has been described in multiple review articles. However, the use of transthoracic approach may be challenging for many reasons. Image acquisition using TTE may be difficult when acoustic windows are limited due to patient factors or due to limited access to the chest and abdomen by, for example, wound dressings or defibrillation pads. Moreover, in the setting of cardiac arrest, cardiac massage creates motion artifacts precluding TTE image acquisition, thus only allowing intermittent use during chest compression pauses. Observational studies comparing manual versus ultrasound guided pulse check durations have also suggested that the use of TTE may cause prolongation of compression pauses exceeding the 10 seconds recommended by the AHA guidelines. TEE overcomes many of the challenges of TTE due to its retrocardiac location, which provides a superior acoustic window and better visualization of many structures, which expands its diagnostic reach. It also allows for continuous imaging throughout resuscitation, which eliminates the challenge of developing an echocardiographic window within the recommended 10 seconds. A retrospective study of video recordings of cardiac arrest cases comparing TTE, TEE, and manual pulse checks showed a significant prolongation of pauses with TTE, but not with TEE. TEE also helps achieve two critical steps of the AHA chain of survival in cardiac arrest. To this end, the first two goals are meant to provide CPR quality feedback in real time and provide rhythm identification assistance that could help reduce delays in defibrillation. Then the ultrasonographer can proceed with a search for an underlying reversible cause and provide guidance for life-saving endovascular procedures. 
So let's go through these four goals. First, to assess quality of chest compression in real time, the mid-esophageal long axis view is used to identify the area of maximal compression or the AMC because it may lead to individualized adjustments of hand placement. The AHA guidelines recommend providing chest compression on the lower half of the sternum and the internipple line. However, several radiology studies have shown that LVUT and ascending aorta were located underneath the recommended chest compression location in 46 to 80% of patients. Supporting these radiologic findings, two TE studies identified the AMC at the LVT or ascending aorta in more than half of the patients. More importantly, a retrospective study of TE in refractory cardiac arrest showed that no patient with a closed LVT had a successful resuscitation. So in order to avoid complete obstruction of the LVT as shown here, and preclude resuscitation success, CPR quality must be monitored whenever possible and TEE is an excellent monitoring tool for this purpose. So remember that the first goal is to make sure that the LVT and aortic valve open during the compression phase to allow left ventricular ejection. The second goal is to assist in rhythm diagnosis when no shockable rhythm is noted on the cardiac monitor. Cardiac ultrasound can identify fine ventricular fibrillation initially missed on cardiac monitors due to low signal amplitude. This can impact decision making and lead to defibrillation without further delay. Moreover, in patients presenting with a non shockable cardiac arrest, TEE can help distinguish pseudo pulseless electrical activity from true pulseless electrical activity using cardiac ultrasound to evaluate the presence or absence of cardiac contractions. With pseudo-PEA, cardiac electrical impulses produce ventricular contraction, but it is ineffective to generate a palpable pulse. It is essentially severe hypotension. Patients presenting with pseudo-PEA often have a reversible cause of arrest that can be treated if identified promptly. With true PA or asystole, echocardiography shows cardiac standstill, which is a consequence of electromechanical dissociation when cardiac electrical impulses are unable to generate ventricular contraction. The differentiation between pseudo and true PEA could potentially help prognostication, although data is still insufficient to change ACLS management on this basis. AHA 2020 guidelines recommend against the use of POCUS to decide whether resuscitative maneuvers should be stopped based on the absence of cardiac activity on ultrasound. The third goal is to identify mechanism and etiology of the cardiac arrest. Ultrasound is useful to rule in or out most of the 5 H's and 5 T's of the ACLS checklist and our evaluation should not be limited to cardiac views only. Of importance, TE is very limited for tension pneumothorax diagnosis, so long ultrasound is essential. Dr. Deneau will explore these diagnoses with more details later on in this presentation. The last and fourth role of TE is for various endovascular procedural guidance. TE is commonly used to confirm the venous position of guide wires when inserting central venous access catheters and to guide positioning of intra aortic balloon pump. TEE has also been successfully used at the bedside as an alternative to fluoroscopy for emergent placement of temporary transvenous pacemaker, and it is also essential during ongoing chest compression to guide venous and arterial cannula placement for initiation of eCPR. TEE also facilitates careful examination of the thoracic aorta to rule out aortic dissection, dissection in the setting of endovascular interventions. To resume, TEE has many advantages compared to TTE. TEE offers superior cardiac acoustic windows, continuous imaging allowing more time for image acquisition, and no prolongation of pulse check pauses. It also offers chest compression quality feedback in real time and superior endovascular procedural guidance. As you can see, rhythm identification assistance and reversible causes diagnosis can also be achieved using TTE, 
and TTE should be used if it is the only available modality that can rapidly provide assistance. In terms of competency, we believe that the most experienced physician should perform the examination and that TEE should never be performed without proper training. We also believe that simulation-based learning is key and that even non-experienced ultrasonographers can achieve competency in acquisition and interpretation of basic TEE views. Finally, concerns exist about the safety profile of TEE during cardiac arrest because of its invasive nature. As for safety issues, no specific literature is available regarding risk of injury during CPR, so we can only infer from ambulatory TEE studies. In an emergent setting, probe insertion might not be as smooth and concerns exist about the possible mechanical compression of the probe against the spine during CPR, potentially increasing the risk of esophageal complications. Given the fact that TE during chest compression may require more pro manipulations due to a higher level of difficulty in image acquisition, it might be reasonable to consider that TEE during cardiac arrest may increase risk of injury as compared to other settings. Even though the emergent setting of the examination does not allow time to verify contraindications or obtain consent, we still believe that benefits probably surpass risk in a life or death scenario. So now, how do we proceed? Institutional implementation of protocols can facilitate TEE use during cardiac arrest, and we think it is especially important in settings outside of the cardiac OR where a TEE probe is not already in place. A multidisciplinary collaborative approach is also important since TEE skilled physicians can be part of the emergency, cardiology, intensive care, or anesthesia team. It is important to highlight again that the use of TEE should never interfere with a CLS protocol. Also, a dedicated physician, different from the leader running the code, should perform TEE. So first, an ultrasound machine equipped with different probes, including a properly sterilized TEE probe, should be called as soon as possible. Since lung ultrasound is the only way to rule out tension pneumothorax, it should be performed rapidly as an adjunct to TE. To reduce delay to first image acquisition and to help prevent oropharyngeal injuries, we recommend inserting the TEE probe under direct visualization during the same laryngoscopy used for tracheal intubation. Although airway management should never be delayed if a TE probe is not available for simultaneous placement. To achieve the four goals that we talked about, the physician in charge starts by performing basic TEE views, and as a last step, the physician can perform extended TEE views if ROSC is achieved or as an adjunct to the basic views. So the basic TEE views are meant to achieve the four goals with the mid-esophageal long axis view as the only view to provide adequate CPR feedback in real time. Rhythm identification and diagnosis of reversible causes can be achieved using many views. And finally, venous and arterial endovascular procedural guidance can be achieved using the mid-esophageal bicaval view and the descending aorta short axis view, respectively. The extended TE views are essentially based on the ASE 2013 guidelines with bonus extracardiac views based on the TGUS and TELUS techniques. In the next part of this presentation, Dr. Dono will detail how these views are useful during management of unstable and hypoxemic patients, including cardiac arrest patients. Let's now discuss about uh, the role of uh, extracardiac uh, T in unstable and hypoxic patients. Among the reversible causes of uh, cardiac arrest, uh, right ventricular fluid dilatation is not specific of uh, pulmonary embolism and can be seen in cardiac arrest in the absence of any obstructive physiology. Myocardial infarction diagnosis is challenging because organized cardiac activity is needed to visualize regional wall motion abnormalities. Regional wall motion abnormalities may be unrelated to the underlying coronary artery disease as a result of hypoperfusion or stress-induced cardiomyopathy, or it may uh, be already present before the cardiac arrest. Ultrasound plays an important role in the diagnosis of uh, tamponade, 
loculated uh, regional effusion may be missed uh, with uh, transthoracic echo, but uh, TE is much more sensitive. Tension pneumothorax is an important diagnosis, but it will be diagnosed uh, with uh, surface uh, lung ultrasound. And finally, hypovolemia can uh, be uh, very similar uh, in terms of ultrasound findings compared to a distributive uh, shock. And there are some issues regarding the diagnosis of hypovolemia. There was an animal model where they identified RV dilatation during uh, arrest induced by hypovolemia. So extracardiac views might be needed to identify potential bleeding source. And this is when we talk about transgastric abdominal ultrasound or transesophageal lung ultrasound. So when we look at the heart with uh, TE, we often think that uh, TE can only diagnose the heart, but there's no reason why we cannot look around to the right and to the left and also below the diaphragm. So the extracardiac TE applications have been classically for lung and upper GI cancer differential diagnosis, for celiac blockade, for pancreatic cancer. But in terms of perioperative application, this is a useful technology to de determine the cause of hypoxemia, which is most of the time pulmonary, to identify any extra cause of uh, hemodynamic instability or cardiac arrest, and to monitor splenic and renal perfusion. So in the guidelines for perioperative T, it is mentioned that uh, T is indicated for unexplained persistent hypotension or hypoxemia. These two conditions can be uh, absolutely of a non-cardiac origin. So Dr. Cavallas will uh, talk a little bit more in detail about the transesophageal lung ultrasound. Um, but what is very important to understand is when you use a T probe uh, outside the heart, uh, the orientation of the image will change. So for instance, when you do a transgastric view, what you are seeing on the uh, right side of the screen is the left uh, side of the heart, and what you see on the left side is the right side of the heart. So whenever you turn, mechanically rotate the TE probe, the appearance of the image will be different. For instance, at six o'clock, what you see on the right is the right of the patient. What you see on the left is the left of the patient. And the orientation will change as you rotate mechanically the T probe. The same way as if you turn, go to 90 degree and you turn to the right or to the left, what you always see on the right side is the cephalad portion of the anatomical structure. So TGAS is called transgastric abdominal ultrasound, and uh, with TGAS, we can identify the most of the upper abdominal structures. We can see all those solid organs, the aorta, the branches. We can detect free fluid, and we can also monitor signs of venous congestion uh, and uh, renal perfusion also. So this is uh, an article we published uh, uh, last year on this uh, uh, topic. And there are basically 10 views that can be used that we've described uh, that can uh, provide you with information on the upper abdomen. And basically, these views can be um, divided in those in which the ultrasound beam will be at 12 o'clock, like the transgastric view. If you turn to the right, then you'll see the inferior vena cava, the uh, portal vein, and the hepatic vein. If you continue turning and you're at six o'clock, this is when you're gonna see the large vessel of the uh, abdomen and the pancreas. And then as you turn to the left, you'll see the spleen and the kidney. So I will have time to go over all these views, but I'll give you an example of how this can be useful in the context of cardiac arrest or hemodynamic instability. This is a 50 year old man who was unstable after cardiac arrest. And what you can notice once the patient was resuscitated, it's, there's a very empty left ventricle and there's almost a flow track obstruction in those patients. So in this case, the cause of hemodynamic stability is definitively not the heart. So this is why it's important to move in the abdomen 
And when you do this, then you can see there's free fluid in the abdomen. If we look in more detail, this is the stomach. This is the left lobe of the liver. This is the heart. And this is the free fluid. So this patient is basically uh, bleeding into the abdomen. This is uh, free peritoneal fluid. So another view that it can be useful uh, when you have unstable patient is the inferior vena cava and the hepatic uh, venous view. Uh, you can diagnose RV, systolic and diastolic dysfunction, pulmonary hypertension. You can look for IVC stenosis, and I'll show you an example. You can see if there's a tumor or thrombus, particularly after uh, ECMO uh, patient, because this is a, a high risk for this type of thrombus. Uh, you can diagnose abdominal compartment syndrome, and it's also been used as an intraoperative monitor during uh, renal cell carcinoma uh, surgery that involving the IVC. So this is an example of a patient who's, uh, in which we're coming back uh, on bypass, difficult to wean. He had um, a redo aortic uh, valve replacement and mitral valve replacement. I'd like to point your attention on this uh, high velocity signal just at the interatrial septum. And in fact, uh, this was a, we had a similar case which was um, uh, trend given to us by Annette Vegas in Toronto. So this patient had an empty left ventricle, but the inferior vena cava was highly distended. And again, on the same view, you can see this high velocity signal at the uh, level of the interatrial septum. But when you look closer here, what you see is an inferior vena cava stenosis. And this was the cause of the hemodynamic instability, which can lead in some cases to a cardiac arrest. So you can, we've been seeing those in um, uh, any surgery that involve the inferior vena cava. Uh, in liver transplantation, it's uh, not uncommon. This is an example, 37 year old uh, man with a phone procedure. And uh, this is the IVC uh, before and after bypass. Uh, in fact, it's just before the correction. So uh, what you can see before is the IVC is distended and you can see almost the red blood cell uh, barely moving. And then on the other side, you see the red blood cell are much faster. So uh, basically this patient had a, a diatrogenic inferior vena cava stenosis. And one of the way you can diagnose this condition is to use um, pulse wave Doppler of the hepatic vein. So this was the hepatic venous Doppler before bypass. And this is when this patient was unstable. So if you have an IVC stenosis, you barely have any uh, Doppler signal in your hepatic vein. This is another example, a very unstable uh, patient. This was a case done uh, in 2004 and uh, were difficult to wean from bypass. He's unstable and uh, we insert an intraotic balloon pump. I remember at that time, uh, people were not using very much ultrasound to do a vascular access. So you see there's something, uh, you know, inflating and deflating in the inferior vena cava. And basically, that's the intraotic uh, balloon pump in the inferior vena cava. Finally, uh, this is an example of a patient who has a abdominal compartment syndrome. And in those patients, what you will see, and this is a transthoracic image, but would be the same with T, you barely can see the inferior vena cava. It's completely collapsed. And sometimes the only way you can see it is by using a low velocity Doppler signal and you see a air, a color air, basically airline uh, aspect in the, uh, on the inferior vena cava. So in conclusion, T is an essential tool to optimize chest compression in cardiac arrest. Left ventricular alpha track obstruction during cardiac massage will lead to an unsuccessful resuscitation. During cardiac arrest, TE can uh, rule out fine ventricular fibrillation and distinguish between true PEA versus pseudo-PEA. TE can provide endovascular uh, procedural guidance for eCPR. And finally, cardiac and extracardiac causes resulting in cardiac arrest or hemodynamic instability can be identified with TE, TELUS, and TIGAS. Thank you for your attention.